Hello and welcome to WingCon 2023. This is allegedly the autumn edition, unless you're here in the Southern Hemisphere where it is coming into spring. My name is Frances Billinghurst and I am a Moonbook author, of course. I have written a number of books, including my latest book, On Her Silver Rays, A Guide to the Moon, Myth and Magic, which will be the subject of my talk. But I've also written on Encountering the Dark Goddess and Contemporary Witchcraft. So hello and welcome. A little bit about me, just in case if you are watching this and you are not familiar with who I am. I reside here in Adelaide, South Australia, so I'm coming to you from Ghana country. As such, I acknowledge the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains as being the traditional custodians of this land. I have been interested in metaphysics, mythology, ancient cultures, parapsychology, all those sorts of things for probably most of my life. And also have been actively following our Earth-centric spiritual path, being initiated as a traditional witch. And enough about me, I know we'll be wanting to get into my presentation, which is about the moon, myth, and magic. So what I thought I might do is start off by sharing a little bit of the introduction to this book, because this sort of sets the scenes as to how I perceive the moon and connect with the moon myself. So you might want to close your eyes or just got a copy, read along with me. So the moon fascinates me. I can gaze at her beauty endlessly as she evolves from the first sliver of hope in the night sky to the fertile crescent of the waxing moon, followed by the abundant full moon before she wanes and eventually disappears altogether, only to reappear a few days later. In the reflection of the sun's rays, there is something mysterious about the moon. She. And I usually consider the moon to be female, despite the being moon gods. She offers a calming presence most of the time. Yet, although and throughout her cycle, Lady Luna pulls at our subconscious and entices us to loosen our restraints. She also touches us on a deep soul level, reminding us of our animalistic and primal heritage. And how many who are watching this have ever wanted to simply howl at the moon? Mother Moon. The wise woman will share her teachers and her secrets with us if we take the time to stop and listen, to connect with her gentle ebbing and flowing. And these secrets lie deep within us and cannot be experienced through someone else's words, even the words of my book. Have you forgotten how to get in touch with mother? Have you forgotten to recognize her ebbing and flowing nature even in our frantic world? If so, maybe it's time to gaze at the moon a little bit longer than just a casual glance, for she will then remind you once again. Throughout her 29 and a half day cycle, the moon waxes and wanes. Her mysterious forces exert their influence not only on our planet, but also on our own selves. And for many centuries, humankind has planted with a pool on the earth. We have conducted rituals according to what phase she's in. We've used her light to guide us across the waters and even built monuments that align with her passing. Our earliest ancestors turn their eyes upwards to the heavens and wonder as they felt this ebb and flow within them and around them. And today in our modern world, 
we still ebb and flow with the name. Even if this realization may be a distant memory or perceived as an inconvenience. So if you're watching this, I would recommend or suggest that you turn off your computer, put aside your mobile phone and step outside. Gaze upwards to the heavens and close your eyes. Breathe and allow yourself to feel the pull of the lunar light as the beams ebb and flow with her changing phases. Take a breath and gaze at Lady Luna. Because when you do, she has many secrets to share with you. So the moon is our nearest luminary and as I just mentioned in the introduction to my book, it doesn't actually produce a light of its own, it reflects back on the sun. And as such, this is actually led to its connection with the unseen, with the in-between places and the liminal spaces, with the mystical and the magical. And as such, a lot of folk traditions have emerged over the many years of the, of the centuries, all connected with the moon. And that's Mr. Caller on us here on Earth, many thousands of kilometers below. I recall when I was growing up, my grandmother used to make us all curtsy a new moon and turn over, back then it was a sixpence or a five cent piece, whatever we had of silver in our pockets or our purses, silver being a metal of the moon. And we would leave out these little coins to be moon blessed. And how many of us have been told that the moon was made of cheese, or that there was a man in the moon, or even a rabbit? We may have been told these things, or maybe the moon was attributed to something else. Doesn't really matter because, again, this all sort of leads into the mysterious, mystical nature of the moon. And all around the world, regardless of culture or location, there are many stories, myth, folklore about the Earth's only natural satellite, that it's gentle waxing and wanings in the heavens above us. And even through Earth's centric spiritualities today, the moon, as I just in my introduction, is often considered to be female. Some places in the world, however, perceive the moon as male. Like here in Australia, a number of our indigenous peoples, they see the sun as woman, the moon as male. And some, we call them countries, some groups actually go as far as describing that the sun woman pursues moon man across the sky day in, day out. Only the two are meeting when eclipses occur. I wanted to share a couple of mythologies from indigenous peoples here all about the moon. And I had a description or image of Australia to show you where these peoples are because they are from the Northern Territory or the top end of Australia. Especially the first group of people, the Umgar people of the Northern Territory. They would see the full moon as a fat, lazy man. And he would get punished for being fat and lazy by his wives. And this punishment was that his wives will begin to chop pieces off him. A bit brutal. But if you thought about that, this is the moon as it begins to wane. And eventually, the moon man manages to escape his wives and he climbs a tree to follow the sun. However, because he's mortally wounded, he dies. And this is the dark moon. But he is immortal. So he rises again three days later. The new moon. And then over the next three, two weeks, he begins to grow increasingly fatter 
increasingly lazier, which really begins to annoy his wives again. So they begin to cut pieces off them. And so we have the cycle of the full moon, the waning moon, to the dark moon, then the rebirth of the new moon, back up to the full moon again. And what I find rather interesting in this story is that it actually acknowledges the dark moon phase and the new moon as being two separate phases. I say it's interesting because in modern astrology, without the esoteric um, sort of overlay, usually you don't get a separation between the dark moon and the new moon. It's usually with the astrologer has sort of esoteric or occult influences that you actually are ending up with this extra phase of the moon. Normally there's eight phases here, there's that extra ninth phase. And another myth that I want to share actually comes from Cape York, which is the northern end of Queensland, so this is the top, top right of Australia. And here the story is about how the moon became shining in our sky. So many, many years ago, people realized that a light was needed at night time because they found it difficult to travel or hunt. And as the sun lit up the sky during the day, the people thought that they would burn a huge fire at night and this will get them the light. However, this turned out to be very unpractical. Then someone in the tribe decided or suggested that they make a special shiny boomerang that they could throw this boomerang up into the sky and that will allow everyone to see at night. And that's what the people did. They made a boomerang However, no one was able to throw it up high enough into the sky. And they kept trying and trying and still the boomerang couldn't get up into the sky. Well then, one old man, thin man, weak man, stepped forward and suggested he was going to have a try. Everybody laughed at him. He was too old, he was too thin, he was too weak. And eventually, no one else could get the boomerang up in the sky, so the elders decided to let the old man have a go. To see if he could throw the boomerang. And throw the boomerang he did. The boomerang went higher and higher. And finally it stayed up in the sky. As the moon shining down on the people. And every month we see the boomerang in the sky. For this is the crescent moon. So we all know about or very familiar with people telling us that when you work with the moon, if you manifest, that will bring things into us. And the best thing to do that is during the new moon. And if you want to Get rid of something, you do that on a waning moon, when the moon is moving from full to the dark moon. However, to me there is more to it than that. And what I was going to show you was actually my birth chart and talk about working with a waning waxy moon because we're coming up to a new moon. What I do personally, and this is to help me connect further and deeper with the moon, especially when it comes to manifestation. I do have, well, I have found over the years that the more that we can sort of fine tune, be more direct from what we want to bring into our lives, the more success that we have. We also need to sort of realize that in the waxing and waning phase of the moon, the moon actually brings through different sorts of energies and about this being just a blatant plug for my book I do spend the first part of the book talking about how to personally align 
with the ebbing and flowing natures of the moon and also the other energies around us because the stronger we develop this connection and also this connection with the other luminaries in the cosmos as well the more we begin to look work and live our lives with the ebbing and flowing nature as opposed to working against them and if you're surrounded in the sort of esoteric or occult circles you probably have heard about the oxium as above so below that's what we're talking about working with the moon or the other planets around us in alignment to our own life here on earth and when we start bringing that information into on a deeper level we move into that second part of that oxium as within so we are so without so we begin to have more control over what we are bringing into and creating in our life so even though we're working with our natal, natal chart our birth chart you do not have to be an astrologer i'm not i just have an interest in astrology I follow a few people's blogs and YouTube channels and there's a lot of information out there. So the first thing you need is to actually get a copy of your birth chart. If you know your date, time, place of birth, that's easy. There's plenty of sites that will give you a free birth chart that you can download. It will give you the position of the planets and asteroids and even particular the houses from your ascendant, what planet was actually rising, constellation was rising at the time of your birth, all the way through. And this is what we sort of want to look at, especially with the houses. If you don't know your time or location of birth, then you can still get a chart done with just the date, but it won't be as fine-tuned. Uh, but you can sort of, if you not, don't know about the timing, you can make educated guesses as to whether the energies align with you or not i'm quite lucky that i actually did know my time date and place of birth and i'm saying this because we're coming up to a new moon we've got a new moon next week the 14th or the 15th of september it's going to be the 15th here in adelaide and the first thing i do is to find out what time the new moon is if you work with the moon in the way that I do, you'll probably have your own specific way of working out the times. I go onto a website called timeanddate.com and there you can put whatever location you are in the world or the closest city and it'll come up with the time of whatever phase of the moon you're interested in. And in this case, it's a new moon and here in Adelaide it's going to be sort of coming in at 11.09 in the morning and that's on the 15th and it will also be in the astrological sign of Virgo and again if you do searches on Google whatever your favorite search engine is you can find out what astrological sign the moon will be in so armed with that information already there's a new moon on the 14th or 15th of September and it'll be in the astrological sign of Virgo. The next thing is to look at what Virgo relates to. So it relates to organization, sort of personal discernment, taking action and cleanliness, so simplifying and streamlining our lives, getting rid of clutter, getting rid of outdated beliefs, sold relationships, day-to-day -day habits, all that sort of thing. It also offers an uh, excellent time to work on projects, due diligence Virgos really like to sort of chunk down into the details especially when it comes to analyzing critical data so if you've got anything like that that you've been putting off maybe this new moon is a good time to sort of get into that motivation the next thing I was going to show you copy of my birth chart we find out what house Virgo is in at the time of our birth and again this relates to or comes up when you actually know your time place and date of birth it can actually break down into the houses 
and mine for example is in my eighth house and there are 12 houses and each house relates to an aspect of our life and again a simple internet search can come up with these diagrams so the eighth house from memory has a sexual uh, connection with it about intimate relationships it's not just friendships it's more sort of personal relationships it's also about shared money and property so again the, our level of information about this upcoming new moon things I, I personally want to manifest I'll probably be more successful now that I'm drilling down to say bring things in maybe a new relationship or spicing up an intimate relationship maybe i've been thinking about investing in my money in shares or property maybe there's a property transaction that is on the back burner these are the things that i should be working with the moon to bring into my life I also like to take things a little bit further because that's just me. I said I have a healthy interest in astrology even though I'm not an astrologer and with the moon being so important when it comes to manifestation I like to see what else is around, what else is happening in the cosmos that may be adding or being beneficial to say things I want to bring into my life or can even enhance or become an obstacle for my magical work with the moon. So I'm looking at planets which are in retrograde and at the moment we just seem to have a lot of planets in retrograde or which may be big conjunct to the moon so that means with um, the planets are next to it, each other. On new moons it's the sun that's conjunct to the moon and when it is a full moon the sun is on the opposite side to the moon there's also if a planet is squaring so it's at 90 degree angle so that could be like a little bit of an opposition or there's oppositions as well so these are sort of like obstacles that may mean that your magic will not manifest in the way that you may originally desire so you might have to sort of change things around it probably more importantly especially at this new moon need to keep in mind that Mercury, the planet that rules communication, especially in this day and age where everything's done over the internet with emails, it also rules the internet. Mercury is in retrograde and it will actually be what they call stationing direct, so it will be coming out of its retrograde phase around about the same time as the new moon. However, it means that it's sort of like standing still from our place on the earth and as such that could actually slow things down or change the outcome of what we wanted to bring in regardless of if we're looking at uh, whether Virgo moon is in our astrological chart or not. So I will take note especially of uh, what they call the inner planet so that's Mercury, Venus and Mars because they have more of a direct influence on, on us. So with Mercury sort of stationing direct around about the full moon it could also mean that something that we've been waiting on would finally be arriving. We could be hearing from something. I know personally I'm waiting on a package it's sort of stuck in customs so I'm hoping and this is what I'll be working on in my manifestation that this package will actually arrive. And we also should note too that Mercury just happens to be the planetary ruler of Virgo. So this means it will be sharpening our discernment of well working in that area. So as I said earlier you don't need to be an ast astrologer you don't really need to deal with working with this moon to the level that I do but I do find it really helps focus my intention 
my direction. So my energy is not all over the place, and especially if there are planets in retrograde or opposing factors, that I'm looking at all the obstacles to still see how my magic can go around these obstacles to reach the end goal. So I do hope that that has been of interest to you. Now what I wanted to do next, as we're talking about the moon, let's shed some myths, shed a little bit about how I work with my lunar magic, sort of taking it to a different level. I wanted to share a meditation with you. Close your eyes and listen to my voice. So just do that. If you're able to or when you're watching this on the replay. So get yourself into a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Ensure that your back is straight. Your spine is aligned. Have your hands resting gently in your lap. And take a couple of deep breaths. So we want to be breathing to our diaphragm. Moving down from our chest. And inhale. And exhale. Allowing your shoulders to relax. And then you want to bring your conscious awareness to the top of your head. This is your Sarasvara Chakra. Helps you to connect with divine source energy. As you inhale. And exhale. And bring your conscious awareness to your third eye, to your Anjana Chakra. Let space between your eyebrows. Inhale and exhale. Bringing your conscious awareness to your throat. The shorter chakra. Inhale. Exhale. Bringing your conscious awareness to your heart. Anahata. Inhale. Exhale. Relaxing your whole body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. And as you relax, just breathe in the darkness, the nurturing darkness. It allows the seeds to rest, ready for germination deep with another earth. Breathe in the darkness. It allows the stars to shine brightly in the cosmos above us. And as you inhale and exhale overhead Visualize, imagine, silvery orb of the moon, Lady Luna, Grandmother Luna. She's sending down lunar beams down into your crown chakra. And as you inhale, exhale. Lunar energy enters you. It's cool. It's calming. It's relaxing. The violet lunar energy is beginning to fill you up on the top of your head 
to the tips of your toes. And before you is an ocean ebbing and flowing, waves gently massaging the shore. As they move slowly across the shore, in and out, inhale oh. and exhale, in tune with the waters. The moon is shining, reflecting on the water, the moon shadow. Stretching towards you, enticing you, calling you into the water. Inhale, exhale. Dip your toes into the water's edge. It's born comforting. The water and the moon is calling you to surrender. Surrender your hesitancy. Surrender your fears, your phobias, limitations, all to the gentle ebbing and flowing nature of the water. Then as you walk into the water, you feel it gently lapping around your ankles, massaging, curling you, offering a sense of peace. Continue slowly walking till it comes to your calves, massaging, curling you. Offering a sense of inner peace. Do you dare to work further? Before you make your decision, you notice a shell floating on the surface of the water. Pick it up, hold it to your ear. Allow the ancient wisdom and guidance of the ocean. There has long been the subconscious messenger on the money. Enter your ear and psyche. Inhale. Exhale. Listen. Surrender to the moon. And as you do, you hear a whisper upon the living rays streaming down upon you from Lady Luna herself. I am the star that rises from the sea, the twilight sea. I bring men dreams that roll their destiny. I bring the moon tides to the souls of men. The tides that flow and ebb and flow again, that flow and ebb and flood eternally. These are my secrets. These belong to me. I am the eternal woman. I am she. The tides of all men's souls belong to me. The times that flow and ebb and flow again. The secret silent tides that govern men. These are my secrets. These belong to me. Isis in heaven, on earth Persephone. Diana of the moon and Hecate. Bound Isis, Aphrodite of the sea. All these I am, and they are seen in me. The hide full moon 
in the mid heaven shines clear. I hear the invoking words here and up here. Shall I die? Okay. And it'll be a panicky. I come unto the priest. They call me. He lay up. Exhale. Opening your heart, your mind. Kissing me. The possibilities of the cosmos all around us. And then take another deep breath and slowly begin to walk back to the water's edge. The foreshore. Try that. You with each step you take. You come back to your normal state of consciousness. Waving your fingers and toes. Then opening your eyes, we are ready to return. And I just would like to acknowledge that rather beautiful hypnotic poem or invocation is one that I personally use quite a bit when I connect with me and that's taken by Dion Fortunes Moon Magic and this is my copy it's a very old copy and she's also got versions in Sea Priestess as well by Dion Fortune so if you like that sort of ebbing and flowing nature with Moon if you feel that that poem can really connect you with those energies especially if you are feeling a little bit like you're working against them as opposed to working with the moon then maybe check out some of Dion Fortune's work as well so I thought I would like to finish while we're talking about the moon with a little exercise that I also do have in on her silver rays and this is something that anybody can use all you need to do is get a bowl of water the bowl could be anything that you like fill it up with water and sit yourself in front of the bowl and position the bowl where especially when the moon is full you can actually see the reflection in the water and when you've managed to achieve this maybe record or have someone read that beautiful poem by Diane Fortune or anything else that you've found that you like the ebbing and flowing nature and stare at the image of the moon in the box and slowly count silently to nine nine being a number of completion closing your eyes and seeing if you can hold that visualization of the moon that you saw in the bowl if you have anything you would like to ask Lady Luna to show you this is the time to focus on that and then when you feel you've connected with the moon drink the water imagining that the lunar energies are flowing through you and connecting you I do hope you've enjoyed my presentation on the moon I understand that I'm the first cut off the rank tonight or this afternoon with MoonCon I've got a whole lot of other really interesting presenters so I do hope you stick around person following us is going to be talking about trees, berries, check out the previous moon con and until then thank you for watching and blessings I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.